Back in 2018, I wrote this book, Secret Self-Made Millionaires Teach Their Kids. And the premise was simple. After 30 years of interviewing self-made millionaires, one of the questions I asked them over the years was, what do you teach your kids that the middle class and poorer classes in terms of socioeconomics don't teach them? And I will tell you, it was stunning. It's like they're living on another planet. And I'll, and I'll give it to you a little bit at a time. The book is, I recommend the book, and there's a workbook that goes with the book. I, I recommend reading this book with your kids, starting at, say, 10 or 11 years old, and going through each chapter, each concept that the rich teach their kids that, that others typically don't, and discussing it with them, and then having them fill it out in the workbook. The workbook, the workbook is free. Uh, it's there's, it's downloadable. You just get the book, and it'll it'll tell you where to go to get the workbook and all that, and fill it out. Because I'm, I want to share with one of, today with one of the things that they taught me over the years <clears throat> that's so important. And this is kind of a controversial topic with parents and children right now. It seems so. It seems around the world, especially in the United States and and you know Western countries that are democracies that promote capitalism. And, and this one is the concept of falling in love with your work, doing what you love to do. Now that was a big push, of, depending on your age. You know, 30 years ago, it was a big push. There was a book out called, you know, do what you love and the money will follow. And a lot of people said, hey, hurrah, it's, isn't that a great idea? Do what you love. And other people, more pragmatic said, especially the rich said, hey, look, you know, I can be a basket weaver. I can sweep streets. I can I can take garbage out. Um, I can do you know things that I might love to do. Okay, for whatever drive a truck or whatever reason. There's nothing wrong with any of those things. It's just that you're never going to most likely you'll never in those occupations you're never going to get anywhere financially. So if I'm loving what I do, maybe it's teaching school, admirable profession, of course. Most teachers are gonna are gonna die broke, it, and it's it's very unfortunate. But that's the way it actually is. And so people, more pragmatic, rich people said, "Hey, look, it's great to do what you love, but if you're gonna struggle financially and lose sleep your entire life because you don't have enough money, is it really worth it?" <clears throat> well, here's what I really combined all, all the different answers over 30 years before I wrote this book. Um, and put it in this 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 whole you know this whole philosophy that they have. Um, what they said was, do what you love to do, and figure out a way to get paid more money than you know what to do with. Okay, then more money than you need as you're doing it. Okay, and let me give you a personal example because this is how I formulated most of my career. Okay, I love to play tennis. I was groomed to be a professional tennis player, and I did that for two years. And I was kind of a minor league player. No, I was a minor league player. I wasn't kind of a minor league player. <laughs> I was a minor league player, and uh, and that's as far as I got. Even after all that practice and all that work, and so I didn't really know about anything else. So I went to college, of course, and then I started coaching tennis because that's what I really grew up doing. And that was a lot of fun, and I did love it. <clears throat> and the kids were fantastic. A lot of them became very successful. And I also worked with pro players and all kinds of different athletes, Olympic athletes in terms of mental toughness training. And all that was great. Here's the problem. I never made more than $40,000 in a year. And that's a long time ago, but even then, it wasn't any money. We went deeper into debt all the time. So I'm doing what I love to do, but I'm broke. Well, that's not really you know, a great solution. So eventually what I ended up doing was taking all the psychological tools that I had learned as an athlete and as a coach and I ended up putting those in a process called the Mental Toughness University process and then sold them for tens of millions of dollars to corporate sales teams for around the last 20, you know, basically the last 25 years. And so then I was able to take to do what I love to do and then also have more money than I really needed uh, in the process so I didn't have the stress of, of money problems and you know those everything that goes along with those problems, health issues and all that, that goes along with the stress of not having enough money. And so that's just, so I was very fortunate that way. I'm not saying it's easy to do. It was very difficult to do, as a matter of fact. Um, it never had never been done on my topic before. No one had ever sold mental toughness training at that level to corporate, to corporate America. And so <clears throat> that's one example. The other people that do the same thing. I have a friend that, that loved cars. He always loved cars. And he, he sold cars on a used car lot. And he didn't really make a lot of money, but he loved cars. Well, 
Finally, he figured out, I've got to learn how to monetize this or I'll struggle with money my whole life. And so he did. So he got in partnership with a multimillionaire who owned a bunch of car dealerships. He got in for no money as a managing partner and came out with about $30 million at the end of his career because he took his love of cars and sales and got an opportunity because of hard, of hard work. And he made that guy a greater fortune even, but he made his own fortune. And now he's retired living a, a very nice life at a, at, a, at, a, at a pretty young age. And so th so it's doable. But, I, but my point of this whole thing to wrap this up is, you wanna teach this to your kids. You gotta, the, you know, the, the things that the Pollyanna approach that so many parents, in my opinion, um, and I should say, you know, that I uh, tell you this up front is that, you know, I'm, I'm not a parent. So you might be watching this saying, well, you're not a parent, Siebold, what do you know? Okay, that, that's fair enough. But that said, I see a lot of people out there with kids that are unprepared for the real world. Uh, the world's a tough place, especially if you want them to succeed. Of course you do, succeed at a level where they don't have to worry about money. You've got to teach them to be tough. You've got to teach them to think critically. If they follow the masses, they're going to live like the masses. Make no mistake, unless you've got some geniuses, you know, a genius for a kid, you know, or your kids are all geniuses. <laughs> most people, most of us are not geniuses, right? So we have to be tactical. We've got to be pragmatic. We've got to look at what is as opposed to uh, what we wish the world really was. You know, it's a tough place. Business is tough. People are tough. You've got to prepare them for the onslaught that they're about to face. And one of those things is philosophical. There are gonna be teachers, coaches, mentors in college, uh, all kinds of people, right? Clergy, all kinds of people giving them life advice. And I would strongly recommend that you give it to them unfiltered. Tell them the way it really is, which if you're gonna be happy with what you do for a living and be financially prosperous enough never to have to worry about money another day in your life, I'm not talking about buying mansions and Ferraris and all that nonsense because none of that stuff makes people happy. I've been around the rich my entire, well, my entire adult life at least, and believe me, none of that stuff makes people happy. It's just a bigger house or a fancier car, and it's fun for the first two weeks, and it's fun to show off for a little bit, and then you get sick of it, and then it's just like a car or a house or a toy or a diamond ring or red bottom shoes or anything other else, other, other, any other material thing. The thing that really lasts, in my opinion, after writing this book and getting all this information, the two things, let's say, that last the most, number one, of course, is love and relationships. And number two is work. Do you love? Do they love? Will they love what they do? And can it make them financially prosperous enough so they don't have to endure the stress of money their entire lives, which most people, most people in the richest country in the world, we're talking about 95% of our population will worry about money their entire life until they draw their last breath. Not because they're not smart and not because they're not educated, but because they're not pragmatic enough to take what they love to do and convert it into something that creates enough money where they don't have to worry about it. I'm not blaming them necessarily. Uh, there are extenuating factors, of course, um, involved in everything, and it's not an easy thing to do. So I'm not blaming any segment of society. It sounded a little judgmental there, and I didn't really mean to be, because it's not an easy thing to do. I get it. Uh, but that said, you want to point, in my opinion, you want to point your kids in that direction. That's what the rich do. They tell them, look, they go, look, the world's a tough place. You don't want to go to school. You don't want to study. You don't want to work hard. You're going to get your lunch handed to you, because nobody cares. You, you, the teachers are doing their job when they're pushing you, when your coaches are pushing you. You know, they're, they're pushing you to try to mold you into something. But you know what? At the end of the day, nobody cares. It's up to you. You've got to take advantage and take control of your life. <clears throat> And no one else can do that for you. You want to be, be a slacker? Be a slacker. You want to be weak? You're going to get killed. Okay? They tell them the truth. They prepare them. And, uh, and it was fascinating to, to have these conversations over the years, over 30 plus years, you know, with these people. And I always thought, man, if I ever had kids, I never did. But if I ever had kids, man, I would teach them these things. Especially, you know, just one of the major things. Again, yes, do what you love to do. Of course. You, why would you want to spend your life doing something you hate? I mean, if you have to, you do what you have to do to, to pay your bills, of course, and to eat and put you know, a roof over your head and all the rest. We've all done things we don't want to do. But I'm talking about long term. 
Who wants to do something you hate to do? If I had a nickel for every person I could tell you that, that I've met along the way of the, all these interviews I've done for almost 40 years now um, with the self-made rich, people that have done things they didn't want to do their whole life just for money, you know, I'd have a lot of nickels added up, I'll tell you, because there are people that say, oh, I'd just rather have the money and be miserable. That's stupid. And that is just a bad life philosophy. You can love what you do or really like a lot what you do and still monetize it if you're creative. It takes work. It's tough. There are people out there to help mentor you. There's books like this book out there and other books as well, resources that you can get in touch with. But I would set your kids on this path because it will turn out, in my opinion, to be one of the most powerful things in their life. When you love what you do, it's nice waking up in the morning. And if it if it pays your bills and gives you more money than you'll ever really need, I'm not talking about being, you know, crazy rich. I'm just talking about having more money than you need. That's a pretty nice life. And if they have a shot at it, why not help open the door to that? And it starts with teaching them the way self-made millionaires teach their kids. <clears throat> Give it some thought and download and read the book and download the workbook. I think you'll be happy that you did. Your kids will be even happier down the road.